It was off the wall, it was quirky, and they were doing something new. What the freak? It's all weird and it's all out of time and out of tune and what are they doing with those strange instruments? They were hippies, you know, for, for us. I mean, we thought they were strange. <laughs> well, God, Dylan knows what he's talking about. If he says they're the greatest thing since sliced bread, I, maybe I need to really... Oh. It was world music before the term was coined. And there were so many elements in their music, uh, so many strands, you know, West Indian music was in there, uh, British traditional music in there, there was, there was Indian music in there, uh, a little bit of blues in there, a bit of Appalachian, and there was so much fun. I, and they just wrote great songs. I thought they were wonderful. And they were so beautiful looking. I just loved the way that they were. It was out there. I think they're a bunch of geniuses. No wonder they were ahead of their time. Very cool. The Incredible String Band was the first thing that I signed for Electra that really meant something. When we formed the trio, I thought, well, what we're going to do is play the kind of music that we would like to listen to. We're going to invent this music that has all these threads in it, and we'll call the band the Incredible String Band. They came down, slept on my floor, and we went into Sound Techniques for a weekend. And I think the entire record is live in the studios, just three of them in a, in a sort of arc. What you get with sound techniques is just a sense of being in a particular space and an, an energy that remains intact in the recording. So the first track actually, maybe someday, is ju it just sounds really exciting for what it is, which is just two vocals, a guitar and a violin. It has a real sort of power to it. Uh, Clive went off to Afghanistan and Robin went to Morocco. And he came back as a fully fledged songwriter. He had collected all these instruments and he had impressions of Moroccan singing and they had little drums and ouds and all these kind of things. And he brought these back. I've no idea whether Robin actually knew how you were supposed to play these things, but he could get music out of anything. When we got to the second record, we started exploring overdubs and opening up a whole new world. Going from two afternoons to make an album, we then went into taking tremendous amounts of time. It was complicated and it was stimulating to learn about. And so Mike and Robin and I were all kind of learning from John, like what you could do and what were the possibilities. And they'd think, oh, we've got an extra track. Let's overdub this. I do remember a bucket of water coming into this and then sort of dangling microphones over a bucket of water and trying to get the, the swish, that swishy noise. Let's do a crazy harmony on this and the two of them singing harmony with a track that they'd already recorded. It was fun, it was so much fun. Part of the expansion is the bigger budget, but also we were able to do the thing we were most interested in doing, which was manufacturing this kind of music that hadn't really existed. I still think Leslie Onin is, is amazing. Another favourite of mine is um, The Hangman's Beautiful Daughter, which came out in 1968. I really, really like the incredible string band. They sound great, particularly The Hangman's Beautiful Daughter and the wee Tam and the Big Huge. So that's how it's supposed to be. This is the frozen, this is the statement of the music. Creative is a word that just pours out of me when I think about sound techniques. It was just such fun.